Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here to talk unexpected. Yes. This is the show about a bunch of teenagers ranging from 15 to 18. Well, Uh I don't know. Jenna's, I think, 19 now. Well, Lily's like 22. Why is she on this show? I I am so bored of her world. We're going to get to that. Yeah. But um, we're going to be talking about these teen pregnancies and these dumpster fire families, Mm -hmm. which is what we love to do. Now, before we get into it, we do have to issue you a disclaimer. Please, had your wife and had your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast we say a lot of bad words we have stupid opinions and we will not be apologizing for them so if you're sensitive you might want to find yourself another dumpster baby (laughs) but if you're down and ready to party welcome to this dumpster and if you are down and ready to party be sure to follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe that's where the real party's at okay yes and it is the best way to support us if you would like to do so and finally last but never never least yeah youtube if you are watching on youtube please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because every single thing you do helps us to grow or get fatter yes in the algorithm and that's what we're all about baby mm. we're about the fluffiness mm. especially beatrice wow ah. Rude. so before we get into the episode we do have to talk about our schedule because things are changing so quickly yeah. and as raccoons with our fingers on the pulse <laughs> of reality tv we've got to be willing to be flexible yeah very flexible. So, starting next week on Tuesday, TLC is going to be airing. Welcome to Plath. Finally, please hold, please hold. It makes me very oh, emotional. God, I'm so, so, so excited for Welcome to Plath. That's our favorite. It is. It is our favorite ancestor wives. Yeah. these are our favorites. Yeah. We are so basic. I mean, we basic are. white girls for real. But it's starting on yes. Tuesday, and we are going to be covering it starting week one. Yeah. So we're going to have to shift some stuff around. Explain it to the people, honey. It gets all foggy up there for yeah me. it's because she's old <laughs> i'm sundowning isn't that what you just said yeah. you told me i was sundowning you so, aren't you sweet that's because you said that she's last so week sweet. <laughs> she said oh, that last she's last week precious anyway because of the way plathville is going to be releasing on tuesday nights and she's going to be in bed by then so we can't <laughs> record <laughs> so we're gonna have to record like on thursdays which means our episodes are going to be available on Fridays for Plathville. And then we're going to switch the Sister Wives around. Those are going to be released at the beginning of the week on Mondays or something. Yeah, Mondays will be Sister Wives Rewinds. Yeah. Fridays is going to be Welcome to Plathville and a yeah. mini wrap-up of Unexpected. Yeah, we're not going to go crazy in those recaps for those teen hoes. No. We're just going to have our organic, raw thoughts. <laughs> That's right. I've got some raw thoughts oh. on this episode. Me too, bitch. I was so triggered. My jugular was protruding. By Ashley. Um, Ashley, the I was worst so mom. So angry. Ooh. But just FYI, whether you're listening on the pod, whether you're watching, however you're following, things are going to be a little bit fluid. We will let you know what we're doing, but yeah. we'll be back. We'll be here. Oh, yeah. For sure. I think there is one week. Is it starting next week where there's just going to be one episode? Correct. And it's, it's just, just going to be Plathville. Plathville with a tacked on unexpected. Yeah. And then we'll start the next week with our two episodes a week yes is that making sense for everybody i hope so i hope so as well just deal with it okay <laughs> okay now let's get into unexpected all right girl well let's just start with the the craziest one of them Honey. all which was anaya and day day anaya's in the hospital her blood pressure's through the roof she's covid freaking positive and she's being induced into labor yep and ashley is at the Chili's getting food while her daughter's in the hospital. I'm surprised she's with a man. I'm surprised she has a man. Mm. I'm surprised she will tolerate a man. She Mm. seems like a man-hating woman. A people-hating, a human species and animals-hating person. Yes. A hating-ass lady. (laughs) She's a horrible... She's a terrible person. Horrible person. Toxic AF. Terrible mother. I just couldn't believe it. Like, so she couldn't be arsed to be in the hospital waiting for her daughter to be induced. And it takes, you know, it takes 12 to 14 hours or something like that. It takes a long time. I get it. Okay. But she doesn't want to be at the hospital. No. <laughs> so Day Day is there the whole entire time. He had to take her to the hospital because her mom wouldn't take her to the hospital. She thought she was being dramatic. Mm -hmm. She thought her blood pressure wasn't that bad. She thought she wasn't that sick. So she couldn't be bothered to take her daughter to the hospital on her day off. So Day Day's there being 
totally awesome. 100%. Super supportive. He's 17, but he's there the entire time. He's not falling asleep. He's rubbing her feet. He's taking care of her. He's a 17 year old boy Ugh. showing up at that level for this young lady. I'm I very proud it. of Day Day in this moment. Me too. He's been there the entire time. He hasn't left a single moment. Mm -mm. It's so great. And then when she gets her COVID positive results, that's when the nurses tell her, okay, you're positive, but you can only have one person in the delivery room and nobody can go like in and out. It's very restrictive. So then Anaya calls her mom to mm -hmm. tell her this. And then this is where Ashley decides to care. Right. And decides to be nervous for her daughter's safety. Right. So this was very per perplexing for me because... I don't feel like she has a maternal bone in her body. No way. I don't think she cares about her grandchild. I don't think she cares about her own child. Mm -mm. So I'm really wondering why she needs to make her way to the hospital and make a show of being the only person in the room with Anaya. It's like once she learns that there can only be one person, then she wants to be that one person. Of course. Is it like her exerting control her demonstrating that she is in the power position. And you know what? When I'm watching Ashley talk and I'm listening to Anaya as well, I just get like a bone deep vibe Magic. of physical abuse. Oh, yeah. Because when Ashley is like, she'll do what I say. Mm -hmm. I mean, she can do what she wants. She can tell them what she wants, but it's going to be what I say. I'm like, ooh, mm -hmm. I feel that though. Yep. Like, I think Anaya is afraid of her mom. 100 and that is the only reason she's doing what her mom wants her to do oh yeah ashley at one point was like if there's one thing about anaya she respects her mom and i'm like is it respect though or is she afraid of you she's, she's afraid she's afraid yeah 100 mm -hmm. and it just pissed me off i was so triggered by ashley because she shows up to the hospital and she's like making a stink to the nurses because the nurses are like oh well she already has one visitor it's her baby daddy so you can't come in there. And, and like, the receptionist oh. nurse is trying to tell her like it should be him that's in there and she's going to want him to be in there. Hello. And Ashley is actually copying an attitude and arguing with this nurse who I think is actually trying to advocate for Anaya and Day Day. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because once she learns that Day Day is a minor and that he can't actually make any decisions, nor can Anaya, then the receptionist nurse knows, well, I got to let this this bitch asshole in i mean i guess like i'm in the medical field i know s the laws differ from state to state i don't know what it is i think they're in virginia i don't know what it is there but like some states and some like hospital institutions and stuff will like allow 17 year olds to like make their own decisions correct me if i'm fucking wrong i don't know it's different in every state but they're 17 so it's not like they're 15 year olds mm -mm. like kaylee and graham i think ashley in my opinion is just using that for her advantage to play the mom card and be like, well, no, I have to be in there. But why? She doesn't case. want to be a mom. Exactly. Why? It's just for status to be like, yeah, I was there in the delivery room because she's my baby. I care about her. You'll understand when you're a mom. You ain't acting like a mom. No, not at all. It's terrible. It Poisonous. pissed me off. Well, and she's also calling Anaya at the hospital reception to be like, you better let me in there. Like she's mm -hmm. literally saying she's that to her. She's threatening her. She is. She's mm -hmm. like, if you want to keep Daquan in there, then you can't call me for shit. You can't mm -hmm. ask me for shit. Yep. I'm not going to be there for you, period. Right. If you choose him over your mom. So you better make the decision. So of course, Anaya has to be like, okay, Day Day, I'm sorry, but my mom's going to beat my ass if I don't let her in here. So Bye. And they end up actually kicking him out of the hospital. Yes. So he can't even wait in the waiting room yep. because of COVID protocols and he's a minor and this and that. So he has to leave, straight up leave and just wait for word yep. of when his child is born. It's really sad. Like he's trying to show up for her. Yep. He's trying to be there for the birth of his firstborn child. And Ashley, for reasons I cannot ascertain other than you're a poisonous, vile woman, you are taking this from him and you're taking it from your daughter as well. Oh, 100%. And then when you're in the fucking room you're not even being maternal or caring or nurturing at all no you're fucking laughing at her when she talks about how much pain she's in and how she wants an epidural and then you're saying on the couch mm -hmm. this woman made me so mad you're saying on the couch that you don't think that your daughter needed an epidural when right. you've only had c-sections right 
bitch. I was just like gobsmacked. And I think Ania at one point or Ania, sorry, asks, sorry, my vowels are weird because I'm from Hawaii. So I yeah. pronounce the vowels a little differently. Sorry. But Ania says to the mom, can you rub my feet? And her mom laughs at her. She's like, I ain't doing stuff that Day Day is supposed to be doing for you. That's not me. I'm never going to do that. So then why are you in this room? Why are you He's here? in the room rubbing her feet. He's in the room making her feel better. Yeah. He's in the room reducing her anxiety and no. loving on her. Why are you there? I don't know, man. Ooh, she was bad. She made me so mad. And like, I've been seeing people on Reddit being like, well, it's the fault of Anaya. Like, she should have um, confronted her mom and told her, no, I don't want you in the room. I want Day Day. But I'm like, mm, I don't know. Ashley kind of scares me. Ashley seems like the kind of mom mm-hmm. that would have totally retaliated and taken it out on her the second she got home from the hospital so Mm -hmm. she had to be in there and she's probably afraid of her mom so she can't just sit there and stand up and be like no i don't want you there now that's something i totally would have done but if ashley was my mom i would have been like okay i guess you can come in i guess because what else do i have like what other option do i have you're going home to ashley's house exactly and you're going to need ashley's help so you might as well do what ashley is telling you to do it was just really abusive Very and really up. awful to watch and i of course immediately went up on instagram went up to the tlc instagram page they had clips of anaya being in the hospital and just comment after comment after comment just dragging ashley but you know she doesn't care no She thinks she's in the right. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's the other thing, too. Like, she's arguing with the nurse and arguing with Anaya and saying, like, well, they're both minors. They can't sign off for everything. And I'm like, okay, but you haven't been at the hospital this entire fucking time. (laughs) Your daughter's been in the hospital for 12 hours. Getting treatment, getting drugs, getting everything she needs. And she's been fine without you. So don't play that card now that she has COVID and you have to be there because there's only one person. Like, that's so messed up to me i just couldn't stand her yeah the whole thing was bad the whole thing was bad and i felt terribly for day day and when we see the preview and he's talking about enlisting in the air force Mm -hmm. i mean he just seems pretty checked out Mm -hmm. i'd be checked out too like if i had no agency and if i had no control over like being there for the birth of my own child and i've got this toxic fucking woman yep who's calling the shots i'd be like peace out you know i will provide for my child but i'm not going to be dealing with this drama all the time no way. And that and that sucks because he's just kind of perpetuating this like stereotype that Ashley's perpetuating, which is that men ain't shit and they won't ever do anything for their children because she said that on the show. Like she's like, I don't think Day Day is going to be a part of his life. And I'm like, OK, well, now you're creating that mm-hmm. because you're mm-hmm. not allowing him to be in the delivery room and you're also not allowing your kids to like live together or him have a presence mm-hmm. within the kid's life. Like, I bet. Oh, yes. Once the kid's born, mm-hmm. Ashley's not going to let Day Day be around no. as much as he or wants to be. Or she's going to put him down. She's mm-hmm. going to dismiss him. She's going to make him feel like less of a parent, less of a man. She's going to be just as toxic in application when they're trying to parent than she is now yep. in this hospital room. It's just awful. I yep. mean, we get mad. This is reality TV. But like there are people on this planet who act this way and yeah. think they have every right to. And it just... It's wild. It's so wild. And I feel bad for these kids. Oh, me too. Ashley's horrible. Yep, she's the worst. She's by far the worst mom on this show. And then we have Kaylee and Graham. Mm. And Kaylee is getting ready for her 37-week checkup. Yep. She wants Graham to be there, but he's not answering his phone. Right, because he's he's playing basketball. Playing basketball. (laughs) And tending to his sick bipolar mom right i guess so i don't know much about anything (laughs) or bipolar though like and i I don't know that i know anybody i do who is bipolar so i i just say that to say that i really don't have experience with what it looks like to share space cohabitate with somebody who is bipolar because they keep referring to the person as sick and of course mental illness is an illness Mm -hmm. but like as you said last week there are plenty of people with bipolar and all sorts of issues who are productive and they're taking their kids to soccer and to school and they're cooking the meals and they're doing all the things that they need to do so I just don't know what the reality is for somebody who has bipolar but it just seems to me Beatrice that this woman is constantly quote unquote sick whether Uh that's meth sick or heroin sick dope sick whether that's dope sick or bpd sick but like does it really end up looking like that you're just in 
bed all the time. Isn't BPD like super depressed and then manic? Well, BPD is referred to as bi- as a borderline personality. Oh, so bipolar is totally yeah. different. Okay. Correct. All right. So is Boomer. bipolar up and down, manic, depressed, manic, depressed? Yeah. There's technically two types of bipolar. There's bipolar one, which is like the most common, which is the super manic and then the super depressed. And it's the, the cycles. And then bipolar two... I don't know if it's like still considered a thing. There's been like debates about it. Don't fucking quote me on it. But bipolar two is like the opposite where you're always like super fucking depressed. Like you don't Mm. necessarily have as many manic episodes. Okay. And now I have family who have bipolar like this runs in my family. I have several family members who have bipolar one and I've seen them go up and down and I've Mm -hmm. seen them. They have kids like they have a whole family and they can manage. They can function. Yeah, but that's not to say that it can't be debilitating no for sure sure it it can be acute and debilitating depending on what kind of treatment you're getting yes but you're talking about bipolar 2 being predominantly depressive so Mm -hmm. maybe that's what becky has maybe but i'm like i have a hard time believing that you're just sick all the time from bipolar because you have a job and like you have a kid like and i also hate and resent the fact that she's using graham as a crutch and as a support for him for her Mm. while she's going through these episodes that's not fucking fair to put that on a 15 year old boy right and for him to feel the need and the obligation to be there and be the man of the house and take care of his mom and take care of the house while his mom's dope sick in the back or sick from her bipolar is really fucked up to me so i think there's more that's going on behind the scenes there than what we're being told on TV. Yes. And I, I think like surface level, we can all look at Graham and we can say, well, you suck. Like yeah, you're not showing up to things. Yeah. You're not going to appointments. You don't seem like happy to want to participate in the process that's happening right now. And we could say that. But when you look deeper and you see how anxious he is, and I feel like we're seeing him lose weight just in the season since uh-huh. it's begun. Like when he's sitting on the couch crying about having to be the man of the house because there's no man around. Like he looks skinny to me he looks like a shivering chihuahua to me Mm -hmm. this boy is crying this boy is feeling things on a really deep level i'm kind of worried about this kid me too because he feels like this baby is a prison sentence yep and he's already stressed out trying to take care of his mom He's already learning how to use sickness as an excuse so he doesn't show up and be responsible in his own life. But like Mm -hmm. maybe he can't because he too has some mental stuff going on. I just feel really bad for him. And then you have Kaylee who again got pregnant when she's 14. So let's go back to these parents, Becky Uh and Mandy, who facilitated this entire relationship, driving these little kids back and forth to their houses where they are banging and ultimately get pregnant. Like what did you think was going to happen? Hello. So you're not parenting them on that level. But now that we've got this other stuff, Kaylee being a spoiled brat, Graham having a breakdown, like you're not there for them for that either. Not at all. It's really distressing to watch on my TV, Beatrice. Oh, I know because they're literally children's. Like Mm -hmm. they don't know how to navigate like all of these emotions and all of these responsibilities. It's really messed up. I don't know how to do it. I know. I mean, you're in your 30s. (laughs) I'm in my 30s. (laughs) We don't know how to do it. You know, like grown ass people don't know how to navigate life and adult. Agreed. And we're expecting Graham and Kaylee to know how to do this i know it's really frustrating and so like this whole segment with them is that kaylee's pissed off because he's not answering his phone because she wants him to come to this 37 week appointment that's like the next day like early in the morning and so they're like trying to figure out whether or not they're going to pick him up i guess kaylee's dad is just like chilling in his driveway at his house and basically forces him to get in the car and come over to their house and stay the night with no notice or anything like that and so he ultimately comes over to their house and this is where he like automatically has like a breakdown because Kaylee's on his ass like why didn't she answer my phone call also are you here for me or are you here for Easton yeah and he's like I'm here for the both of you but I'm very clearly stressed out and that's not good enough for Kaylee because again she's 15 and she's not mature and she doesn't know how to handle herself and so he starts to have a stress response and they take it into the kitchen and then there's Mandy trying to figure out what's going on with these kids and how she can make it better. It's just a shit show. It is a straight up fire in a dumpster for sure. Oh, 100%. And I will give Mandy credit in this episode because I actually liked how she handled Graham's stress response because he's sitting there like crying and expressing how upset and stressed he is about all of this. And Mandy's like being a mom. Like she's totally being supportive and being like, it's okay. Like you got us too. Like if you need us, you can call us and like, 
please rely on us. I know you've got your mom who's got bipolar and meth addiction. Like. But she also says, and you know, I'm sure she's going to be there for you exactly. too. Exactly. I think she says to Graham, you're going to be a good dad. Yeah. Like she tries to be encouraging. Yeah. So I think that's, I think that's what he needs. Oh, but totally. I don't know if he's reachable at all. I don't know either because judging from the preview, yeah. it seems like he's just going to go back to deuces. Bye. I'm yep. not going to be present. And I mean, it's hard for me because obviously that's not, the best behavior and we shouldn't encourage that from a 15 year old boy but at the same time he's a 15 year old boy mm -hmm. like can you really expect right like this level of maturity right from a kid no. who's got to deal with his crazy mom but at the same time graham you're gonna have to get your shit together exactly because now yeah. you got a kid yeah. and you're gonna have to figure out how to do this but yeah. if you're gonna have parents who just shield you and enable you then it's gonna take longer than it needs to it's yes. just very sad all the way it's around so sad. i don't know where the jokes are here i'm I looking know. for the jokes i can't find the it's jokes not funny. these people are sad it's really sad it's not it's not funny at all not funny at all and then we have like a brief segment <laughs> with emily and nate oh my god emily and emily i can't stand her oh my I'm god i'm sorry i know she's just a young woman trying to make it in this world she's scary a baby she's only one centimeter dilated she's really unhappy about it and then you've got poor nate sitting in the truck with her doesn't know what to say because anything he says is not going to be good enough mm -hmm. because emily just takes it upon herself to constantly mother him which of course men love that oh totally men totally get their dick yeah. hard for uh, you it. when you mother them i'm just like oh this girl tries my patience did you know that they're married what did you know that they're still together no yes girl yes bitch it's true what i saw it i saw it on the reddits and then i'm like let me google it they're married i googled it and many people are saying there are a lot of comments verifying that not only are they together they got married that's unfortunate yeah, it's not going to last. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Sorry, Nate. It's I'm sorry, Emily, but it's not going to last. It's not. And like, I want to give Nate props because I feel like he's kind of trying. He just doesn't know how to support somebody like Emily <laughs> where like nothing is ever good enough for it's her. a black hole of need. I mean, constantly. And like, I want to give her props too because she's 40 fucking weeks pregnant and yeah. she just wants to not be pregnant anymore. Right. And that's totally fair. And to like be told that you're not even a centimeter dilated at 40 weeks i mean like i can't even imagine right you were ready to pop and you're like why get this baby out of me so like i feel for her but sure. at the same time it's like you let this 16 year old boy <laughs> bang you when you were um, pregnant 17 when I, you were 18 17 yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. like why are you expecting him to like stand up all of a sudden know how to be a stand-up guy again 16 years old right he doesn't know anything and i'm not and neither do him. you emily even no, though yeah. you act like you know everything exactly you don't she's calling taryn in the car like bitching about this and she's calling taryn's son a lump and mm -hmm. he's being unsupportive and taryn on the couch is like emily needs to chill out like he's 16 you need to give him time to grow and i feel like nate is the kind of person that will grow up and like mature, hopefully. I think there's some raw materials and some potential for yeah. him to do so. But he's a young zygo baby. He's practically oh. in utero himself. Yeah. <laughs> Are we going to be giving birth to Nate soon? Seriously. Come on. I'm just like, I can't. Give this kid a break. Uh, they're a, a trash fire over yeah. there. And then last but not least, we have the most boring couple on the season. Why? Lily and Lawrence. Why? I'm like, why do we have them on my TV? Why? I feel like we could have found another teen mom couple, but no, we have Lily I mean, and Lawrence. At least a, a teen mom who, who are expecting. Yeah. Like anything would be better than what Lawrence and Lily are giving us. I know. And we didn't even see Lawrence this episode. And, nor did I miss him. No, I didn't He's care. just a lump. Yeah. Speak about lumps. <laughs> He's, He's just a lump. lump. He doesn't want to be there as no. much as I don't want him to be here. Yeah. So Lily and... Her mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lily and her mom yeah. and Lily's son, LJ. Yes. Go to her dream venue uh -huh. to talk to the catering coordinator dude. And she brings <laughs> little LJ along and he's on one. He's a terror. He's ready to destroy everything. Oh, my God. Now, previous to this meeting, Lily was supposed to have filled out some sort of a survey slash questionnaire mm -hmm. so that... These folks at her dream venue yeah. can create the 
wedding of her dreams, uh-huh. but she hasn't filled out anything. Mm-hmm. Lawrence doesn't want to participate in any way, not unlike what happened with Christmas. He's like, you take care of it. I don't care. I'm just going to finance it. And she's just, but is he? Oh. I don't think anybody's going to be financing this other yeah. than TLC. Yeah, probably. But she didn't fill out anything. She just shows Nothing. up with mm-hmm. this crazy kid and her mom. <sighs> And her mom's being so critical of like her kid and how the kid's behaving and the whole wedding process. But then her mom to the cameras is like, I know I've been very critical. I know I've been very skeptical, but I'm actually very supportive. I want to be there for my daughter. Yeah. Because my mom was a total raving bitch at my wedding because she hated my husband. So I don't want to be like that. We all become our mothers, honey. Like We have to break those chains. Exactly. We have to break those (laughs) ancestral curses. That's so true though. But like if we're not careful... We do become our mother. Yes, 100%. And um, I think Lily's mom's becoming her mom. And uh-huh. Lily, you're going to have to be careful too. And yep. Lily, I'm like, what are you doing? You're like rip- whipping out your boo. I know. Because you got to feed LJ. He's pooping on the floor. You got to change his diabetes. I know. Oh, it's embarrassing. It's really embarrassing. He's like drawing all over the desk. He's screaming. She's got this iPad that he doesn't even care about. I mean, this man's time is worth something uh-huh. like these people are taking time out of their day to meet with you you're not even serious you haven't filled out any of the paperwork do you even have the money i mean that is in question what's going on why are these people on a show called unexpected i don't know and i don't care about your wedding yeah i really don't at all because it sounds like from the preview it's going to be called off right so all of this is for nothing because she got herself a stripper girl just like that little guy with the little hands what was his name clayton yes yes <laughs> on the 90 day fiance with and little Annalise. hands little sweet and Annalise, Annalise. she got a stripper stripper yep, yep. And so Lawrence going to get mad. Oh, I know. Which is so fucked up because they had an agreement. Like he said, no strippers. And then you have a bachelorette party mm-hmm. with this old ass stripper. Did you see that stripper? He looked no. old. <laughs> no. He was like 40. Was he sundown in? I don't know. <laughs> he just looked really old to be a stripper. Oh. I'm like, that's so weird. He's got her di- his dick in her face. Uh, it's going to be a train wreck. I love it. I know. I, I can't wait see to it. see that. Yes. Let's have it all get blown apart. Yes please yeah and then we have jenna going back oh God, to pennsylvania I forgot about jenna yeah i know she would have been better on this episode yes. than lily and lawrence but yes jenna's having to go back to pennsylvania because her bitch ass baby daddy is filing for emergency like, custody his sole purpose in life is just to make her angry which is and crazy. do things that like circumvent her plans i mean it's <laughs> which so is wild kind, it's kind of funny i know because he's like 19 years old yeah 19 or 20 years old and his <laughs> whole life purpose is just to destroy her life oh i know it's kind of and she's wild. so spoiled though i'm like i'm glad you have to deal with adult shit this is what happens when you co-parent with a jerk welcome Hello. to the world well and that's what makes me wonder like i said a couple episodes ago when she moves to myrtle beach i'm like did you get this whole agreement that he didn't want to have custody of luca in writing because if you did then this whole like emergency custody Mm -hmm. agreement would have been null and void but i don't think she got it in writing because she's dumb she just talked to him and he's like yeah sure move your entire life and our child all the way down to myrtle beach to be with your new man and Mm -hmm. as soon as you get there the very week that you are there (laughs) i'm gonna serve your ass with an emergency order for custody i'm like that is so wild (laughs) but i mean (laughs) uncensored though real quick okay yeah. All right, we are back from Uncensored, by the way. Uncensored bits can only be viewed and or heard on Patreon. Yeah. So if you want to support us and hear all of our wild shit, you got to go to the Patreon. There's a lot of stuff up there. All right, but back to Jenna. Yeah, so anyway, Jenna has to fly back to Pennsylvania. And then while she's in Pennsylvania, <laughs> she misses her period and has to take a pregnancy test. And I guarantee you. Because JJ and that big old head yep, got all pregnant. up in it. He put his foot in it, his head in it, and his dick in it. Uh huh. His raw dick. Yeah. Let's remind y'all. They don't use condoms. They don't use protection. Uh, Why? So she's pegante. <laughs> pegante. <laughs> Pregnant. Pregnant. Oh with no. With JJ's big headed child. <laughs> That's going to be a big head coming out of all your business, <laughs> honey. A big cranium. Cantaloupe. Good lord. And then Emily finally has their baby. Yeah. And she went and moved in with Nate and Taryn. But then she quickly moved out. For a very short <laughs> amount of time. <laughs> then she went back to Papa. Yeah. Because Taryn Shocker. ain't having it. Yeah. And Taryn says something like, Emily didn't want to share the air or like didn't like the air I breathe yeah. or couldn't share the space. I don't know what's going on. What do you think is happening? I bet Taryn was trying to be a mom and trying to give her advice and like trying to help her out with the pregnancy because that was the whole reason why Emily moved in there in the first place. And then Emily being 
stubborn as fuck and a know-it-all probably was like um that's not how you do it uh. <laughs> probably just bitching at her the whole entire yeah. time go back to your enabling slightly predatory father i know i'm like you're a weird <laughs> big-headed father yeah, also <laughs> lots of big heads in this show i gave lily's mom a pass i know but i was thinking it i know I was looking all of these people have big heads <laughs> And then we have Lily's dumb bachelorette party with a stripper. Right. Lawrence gets mad. Mm -hmm. And then Kaylee also is about to have their baby. And it sounds like she might have to have an emergency C-section because the baby's not coming out. Right. And her useless predator father doesn't know what to do because his little baby going to have to get a C-section. <sighs> and then the baby comes and uh, what's his name? Graham. <laughs> <laughs> Graham's like cute kid but i gotta go i gotta go hang out with my friend or yeah, something my mom's sick yeah <laughs> see ya <laughs> as a typical 15 year old like we're laughing this is terrible it but is terrible it's like what did you expect <laughs> <laughs> kaylee expected something different but Girl, that's how you learn this is why you should tell your kids don't have sex with someone you're not prepared to have a kid with yes i mean that's just the long and short of it yeah but if you're gonna leave them in a house together and they've got raging hormones and one has a penis and one has the vagina I we mean, gonna have a kid hello a kid is gonna come along <laughs> at least my daughter was a lesbian i, I didn't know. have to worry about that thank shit. god yes no very, kidding very happy about could that. you imagine if you were a grandma at 40 i wanted to be <laughs> i know you did <laughs> I wanted to be. I wanted. I kind of wanted my daughter to be a teen mom. I'm like, are you sure you don't like boys? Are you sure you don't want to try to kiss a boy or something? She's like, so mom, terrible. no. Oh my. All God. right. God. See, my mom always scared me and my little sister straight gr growing up. So she was like, never have a kid when you're young because I was a teen mom and it was so terrible. And then she marries a guy with two teenage daughters, and they one of them has kids young, and mm -hmm. then my mom ends up being a grandma at like forty. <laughs> And I was like, see what you get, mom. Yep. <laughs> That's what you get. But you did well. Yeah. But it's time. I know. I mean, you're in your 30s, honey. Listen, if I could create one, we yeah. would have already had like five by now. I just have to bring it up. I I'm know. sorry. Is it rude? Does it make you feel Is it undue pressure we, on you? You know what we should do on Patreon? We what? should have a GoFundMe for our <laughs> adoption fund. Oh my God, for your insemination. Yes, Could we live stream it? Yeah. Your insemination? Oh, I said, oh so, <laughs> no, we're going to adopt. We're going to adopt babies. But I mean, I think it's actually cheaper to get inseminated like Lala did on Vanderpump Rules. Now, I'm sure she know. went to a very high class semen bank and stuff like that. <laughs> but like I had a friend up in Sacramento and she went to the Kaiser and it was paid for under her insurance. Now, she did have to pay for the jizz. I think she paid $4,000 for like lot. five vials, though. Jeez, Louise. One vial got her one baby. She's got four more vials and she could have four more babies. And it's only $4,000. I'm just saying, I feel uh, like the raccoons, we could crowdsource your baby. Maybe. Uh, or we could adopt. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to ruin my figure. You that's, know what I uh, mean? That's uh, true. And get hemorrhoids. It does seem like it's very painful. And <laughs> I'm just watching poor Anaya who just I'm wants saying. her feet rubbed. I and I was remembering that. myself because uh, I wanted to get an epidural. Yeah. But I was too fat. Yeah. They couldn't get that needle between the um, spinal parts because you like, had so many layers they of nicked yes they nicked i did they nicked my spinal membrane oh my so i had like a spinal headache i couldn't stand up it was the whole thing they had Jesus. to do a blood patch in order to cover the nick it was terrible i never got the epidural i had to give birth without drugs oh my god how the long was your labor mm -hmm. I was on Pitocin, so I was induced, not unlike Anaya, and I think it started at like seven in the morning, and I gave birth around two or three. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. Still a but long I time. was on like drugs. Yeah. Up until I couldn't be on drugs anymore. Yeah. And I think it was in the last hour, and I think I pushed like three times, and, and then here pfft. comes baby. Fifteen minutes probably. Well, I've been seeing some things on the Instagram that you can have a baby real quick if you're drinking things like okra water. Okra Did you know water. That? Yeah, it's like it's no. not supposed to taste bad or anything like mm -hmm. that. You can put like sweetener and stuff in it, but apparently it makes the baby slide out. Oh gosh, I don't know. So if I got pregnant, I'll probably drink okra water. Yeah, that, that would be stuff. very helpful. Yeah, we could definitely crowdsource okra water <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'd be willing to do that. The raccoons help us, Thank so you. I can have a baby, so she can be a grandma. <laughs> That's all I want. <laughs> That's all she. I wants. mean, grandma in my 30s is a little young. <laughs> I know, glamma in my 30s, but I'm willing if oh you are. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get the fuck out of here, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. Ah! It really helps us grow the pod and also crowdsource so I can have a baby. Thank you. We will be
be back later this week yeah. with uh, Sister Wives Rewind. We are wrapping up season four. Finally. It's the cul-de-sac earnest payment, honey. Yes. We're putting money down yes. on these homes. It's a very exciting time very if exciting. you're into the rewind. So we'll be back to do that. Until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.